I'm Hal Brown from Lloyd's List with Paul Appleby from BP, Head of Energy Economics. Um, Paul, we've heard a lot of um, projections on the demand side in Asia. Um, how do you see that developing at the moment? Well, certainly Asia still has very rapid economic growth, um, led by the industrialization of China. Uh, that's still not going to go away. So we do see continued strong growth for all forms of energy in Asia, um, particularly for gas and for, therefore for LNG. Underpinning that, of course, in Asia, we still have a high demand for LNG out of Japan, and that is, is also going to persist. And in Europe, we've seen some changes over the last few years. Um, it's been talked about this morning about the reloading of LNG out of Europe. Um, demand might be changing or going down. It's becoming a trading mm -hmm. hub. Um, how do you see Europe developing in the next few years? Certainly demand is looking pretty flat, if not declining, in Europe. Um, but on the other side, Europe's own domestic production of gas is falling, so from the North Sea and elsewhere. So there's a growing import requirement, and that can come either from pipeline or LNG, depending on the relative economics. So there's potential for LNG to continue to expand into Europe. Um, <clears throat> and equally, Europe can play a role as a flexible hub for LNG both coming in and going out. Sure. And uh, on the supply side, um, there are various people coming along. We've got Australia, mm -hmm. um, we've got the Qataris perhaps, you know, coming back after their moratorium, mm -hmm. um, and of course the US. So how's the supply side going to develop over the next five to ten years? We see growing supply from a number of different places, as you've mentioned. <coughs> the, the, I guess the big news is the US entering as an exporter, having thought some years ago it was going to be a big importer, it's going to turn around and be a big exporter. <coughs> um, uh, certainly Australia, a number of big projects coming in, and Qatar, yeah, the uncertainty there is over will they choose to, to re remove the moratorium and, and, re and return as a large source of growth of exports. All of those are potential. The challenge for all of them, uh, right through the energy, energy industry, is cost. Uh, we're seeing some pretty high cost estimates coming out from some of these projects. Uh, the US has the benefit of effectively brownfield development, so it's lower cost for some of those developments. Um, but all of them are challenged with getting LNG out at an affordable price into the market. Sure. And um, you mentioned the US and it's now changing into an exporter mm. because of its shale gas revolution. Um, will there be any other opportunities for any other countries to develop their shale gas to such an extent that they can export it? We see a number of countries that have shale resources. Um, what's hard to see is anybody matching what's happened in the U.S. in terms of the, the pace and scale of deployment of the technology required to extract the resources. Um, China, one example, um, parts of Europe, Argentina, very many number of places where it, this could happen. Um, so we expect it to be happening, but not in the immediate future. It's going to be sold probably beyond 2020 before a lot of these countries are developing uh, at, at scale. Some of them could. Um, uh, have enough to turn into exporters, but more likely it's just substituting from the other, other domestic production or, or, or imports. Sure. Okay. Thanks very much, Paul. Okay.